Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank God for another time God has given us. Always I'll be reminding you that is by grace and grace alone. Before we start our program, let me read some prayer requests from our friends and Pastor Derek will pray for, for our friends. Pray for my husband who is addicted to loans and does not want to return tithe. This is dangerous. Pray for me to have a safe deliver because I have had an uh, incidence of miscarriage. Pray for me. Uh, my husband does not want me to go to church that the Lord may soften his heart. Pray for me to get a child. Pray for my husband who has anger issues and does not listen to anything I tell him anymore. Pray for my parents. There seems to be, uh, to be no love between them, only misunderstanding and arguments. Pray for me to get a spouse and have a blessed family. The last one, pray for me. I am being rejected by my in-laws. Pastor Derek, you are welcome to pray for these prayer requests. Let us pray together. And while we're praying, maybe there's someone here at New Life SDA Church. Maybe you're watching and you're saying, Lord, remember my family too. Just raise your hand. Remember my family too, Lord, as we pray. You can put your hand down, but Lord, you saw our hands because we're living in a war zone. The enemy is seeking to destroy our families. We've heard some specific requests tonight, even from a child who's saying, my parents seem to be constantly arguing with each other from a young mother who just lost a child and, and another young woman who longs to have a child. Lord, we see challenges in families with a husband uh, who seems to love money rather than God. We see poor communication in families that is tearing families apart. Oh, Lord, Today, we bring these specific requests to you. But you also saw the hands raised, Lord, saying, Lord, remember my family. Bless my family as only you can. That in our homes, we would sense the love and presence of God. And even as we listen to Pastor David today, may we hear a word that will strengthen our families and bring joy not only to our hearts, but to your heart. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Um, we remember last presentation. We say that we need to meditate upon him and his word. If you want to put well these ingredients... You have to meditate on God and God alone. Hallelujah. If you will ever put God outside of the circle of your marriage, whatever you'll try to do, you will never succeed. Make sure that God is within the circle. Hallelujah. He is everything. And we say that we need to have the kind of life that is filled with the Holy Spirit. And as I say that, you may be baptized, you are in the church, but the fruits of the Spirit will be seen in your life if you are filled with the Holy Spirit. There is a difference between having a spirit and being filled. Are we together? These are two different things. And I said, you, you have to set your time for yourself. First, lock your door and have a time of prayer. 
just tell Jesus, I know I have the Holy Spirit. That's why when, when you sin, you feel guilt. But I want to be filled. Hallelujah. And it's the only one who can change the life. You know, one of my professors on counseling psychology is a man from uh, Brazil. I remember when uh, we were doing um, some tests, practical tests. It happened that they gave me a client from uh, Lebanon. She was a Muslim. Then they told me, what approach will you use to, to this person? She had a problem of, we, we call it sleeping disorder, sleeping disorder. And then I told the professor, uh, how many sessions do you think it will help the client? He said, according to my experience, maybe seven sessions. And then I used my own style, in quote, it's from above, hallelujah. I, I combined prayer and so-called psychotherapies. One of the things I gave her, it was reading Psalms 35 every night. I remember she told me, I am a Muslim. I don't read the Bible. And then I told her that Christians and Muslims all believe in a prophet called David. In other words, Nabi Dawood, the one who wrote Psalms. So you can read. She read uh, just within seven days sleeping disorder was gone. And the professor asked me, what, what method do you use to take just seven days? I said, it's the combination between prayer and psychotherapy. It is very hard to keep me away from the power of prayer. When it comes to solve marital problems, psychological problems, God is everything. So don't forget this. What do women really want? Complicated question. Yes. Um, Sigmund Freud, for those who just touched the psychology a bit, this name is not new to you. Sigmund Freud says, the great question that has never been answered and which I have not yet been able to answer despite my 30 years of research into the feminine soul, is what does a woman want? <laughs> it's complicated. Just think a, a person like, like Sigmund Freud says, I've been doing research, I've been studying, but still I cannot answer this question. The Bible says the book of uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7, Good News Bible, in the same way, your husband must live with your wives with the proper understanding that they are more delicate than you. <laughs> Let me read this again. <laughs> In the same way, your husbands must live with your wives with the proper understanding that they are more delicate than you. Yes, I, I just give you some few seconds to read it again. They are more delicate than us. Treat them with respect. Hallelujah. Because they also will receive together with you God's gift of life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do this so that nothing will interfere with your prayers. Mm. This is a tough one. So sometimes you are praying, you see as if God does not answer your prayers. You, you are praying, you are fasting, but there is someone who is blocking your prayer at home. And that is your wife. She can block your prayers. Especially when she's complaining. And when you go back to God and tell God, but why? God will tell you, go back and make things in a good way with your wife. And you say, but, but God, you have grace. God will tell you, I told you, live with your wife with proper understanding. 
Hallelujah. It needs proper understanding. And we've been touching some of those areas. And one of them, I told you, they are more sensitive than us. They are more sensitive than us. I was even studying the way they can perceive things and, and how sensitive they are. One of the things uh, these researcher discovered is we have thicker skin than them. Our skin is thicker than them. Why? Theirs is a bit thin. So that it can be easy for them to sense things. I'm not sure whether you have been discovering this, that uh, our mothers can predict something to our sisters. Yes? She can just look at her and say, something is wrong. How did she know? They have extra sense. And when they are at, uh, somewhere maybe in the church and they have left a kid at home and something happens back home, a woman can sense here. They just tell you, I, I don't feel comfortable. It, 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 as if something is not right. Let, let me go back. But a man will never detect that. And when I talk to, to, to men... Only when we have we are we are in our own classes, I do tell them, be careful when you talk to your wife, that they, they have an ability to read between the lines. <laughs> they have ability to read between the lines. So when you talk to them, if you are trying to hide something, they will see it, but they are so powerful to the extent that they can control their emotions. So what they will do is just say, mm -hmm, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in the same way, you, husband, must live with your wives with proper understanding. People think that when you have money, you can attract women. No. If you think that your money will help to get any woman for marriage, that is not a woman. It's an investor. She is there for investment. Money is nothing. When it comes to relationship, money just contributes just a little point. Money. Don't uplift money when it comes to marriage. Don't do that. Read this one. This is one of the researches I'm using in my book. Jean Paul Gravel. Forbes magazine looked at the divorce rates among the wealthiest people in the U.S. And they found that roughly one in two of those billionaires' marriages ended in divorce. H have a look. How many of them? One in two of those billionaires. If money can make marriage, then that one will not happen. It couldn't happen that way. One in two of those billionaires' marriages ended in divorce. Beautiful people are more likely to get divorced than those who are considered less attractive. A new star has found. <laughs> so it's not the issue of outward appearance. Mm. Let's go on. Researchers at Harvard studies how appearance affects the stability and longevity of relationships and found those who are better looking have shorter relationships. Something else. We have to look for something else because money cannot make it. Hallelujah. Outward Beauty cannot make it. 
Now, what is that? The number one thing women want from a man is <laughs> women have two major complaints complaints according to Dr. John Gottman. I must appreciate this guy always when I'm standing here. I do tell them one of the scholars I appreciate when it's come to relationship is Dr. Gottman. He is super. Number one. They are complaining that this man is never there for me. Yeah. He is never there for me. What does it mean? All women want a man who will put them in the first category. When you tell her that I miss you, that means you are the first one in my life. They're complaining. They say, this man, my, my husband is not there for me. I, I feel lonely deep within. As if this man is busy with other things, but not me. There is not enough intimacy and connection. This is another reason. They are looking for someone who will make them number one. I was telling one of my clients, it was yesterday, that just call your wife, not for the sake of giving her instructions. Because sometimes w w when she sees your call, she's waiting for instructions. Like this one, when you call, okay, hello, hello, how are you? I'm okay. I, 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 I told an uh, electric engineer to come there. Is, is he there? Not yet. Okay, let me call him. Done. But if you, call, you will call one day, how are you? I'm okay. She's waiting for instructions. And just tell her, I just need to know, how are you doing? <laughs> Simple like that. There is no enough intimacy and connection. Also this one, because I think we have today and tomorrow, just 10 minutes, I will be mixing some things so that you can go and do your own research. You can add up some materials for yourself. These are just skeletons to help you to, to, to dig deep. So don't expect me to, to talk about everything here. So I will, yeah, I will mix some things. One of the things I ask men, why are you running away from, from, from your wives? One of the things they said is, they don't understand us when we are talking. And because of a lot of arguments, we find our saved room. That is running away, connection. Do you remember I told you that I've been trying my level best to see the root cause of family problems? One of them, the major one, is communication. Just talk about other things, but the major one is communication. If there will be open communication among couple, I believe even the issue of intimacy and connection will be solved. Hallelujah. Most of the time, this is about being there for them emotionally. Man, I told you that women connect everything with emotions. So when they talk, they can cry, they can complain. And because always men want to reason about everything, when you see her crying, complaining, you want to reason. Why is she crying? I told you, you will never know why she crying because sometimes even herself. <laughs> she don't know why she's crying. Some of the things depends on the hormones. You remember Peter said, 
they are more delicate than you. If I ask women, all of them in the room here, just one question. Have you ever happened one day when you just wake up in the morning, you feel sad without reason? You see, they say yes. Without reason. But she's out of mood. Now, as a man, you will think that maybe it has to do with me. My brother is not you. It has nothing to do with you. When you see her out of mood, just support her. It will go that way. Like a wave. And then it will go down. <laughs> Don't forget this. If you go against the sea wave, you are gone. They are more delicate than you. Listening to them, caring for them, and safeguarding their hearts. Hallelujah. Listening is an art. When she's talking, if you will leave everything and listen to her, you got her. Hallelujah. Unfortunately, when we focus on one thing as a man, we can't divide our minds. But also, I, I, I think I told you uh, it was yesterday, but one, that men, the way they are, we focus on one thing. That's why we, we can see bigger picture than women. What does it mean? A woman can see just a single thread on my coat. But when she's driving, she can hit a tree. You don't get me. <laughs> One day you will see an accident at home. She just hit at something and when you ask her, did you saw the tree when he was reversing the car? <laughs> you see, they say no. <laughs> when it comes to driving, men are very good driving at night. Because when it comes to focus, men can focus on one thing. But if you give a woman to drive at night, and when they see something at night, like an accident, whether an animal or whatever, but so long as it has to do with blood, and she's driving, what is this? So if you are not careful, you will find yourself somewhere. But a man, because he is, is a person of reasoning, he will see an accident at night, but he knows it has nothing to do with him, his job is to drive. <laughs> so when, when it comes to listening, take enough time to listen when a woman is talking. Hallelujah. She'll be complaining. She'll do a lot of things. Don't interact her. Let her speak. Let her talk. Hallelujah. By the way, if she's so angry at you and she wants to beat you, the best thing she can pick and beat you is a pillow. <laughs> Make sure that you assure her that she's safe with you. Hallelujah. Allow me to run a bit. Women forget that they are loved every 10 seconds. Minutes, sorry. Every 10 minutes, they forget. Every 10 minutes, they forget that they are loved. So, no wonder one day she will tell you, I can see. You don't love me anymore. 
And the man will say, What's wrong with you? I love you, that's why I'm here. Because to a man to love is to be there. To bring food, paying taxes, and everything. But my brothers, don't forget this. Just tell her that you love her because they forget every 10 minutes. Trustworthiness. What is this? The ability to be relied as honest or truthful. When you say, I will do something, make sure that you do it. Hallelujah. Make sure that you do it. A man of integrity, honest man, and promise keeping. Be honest. Let me just read this one and then we finish. People want to be around others that are real. Meaning they are authentic and have high character. Authentic people are not trying to be above anyone else. Oh, -ho. they are likable, humble, and easy to talk to. Hallelujah. Make sure that you don't pretend you are not trying to show that you are above your wife. When you find a man who says, don't you know that I'm a father of this family? That is the sign something is not okay. You don't need to introduce yourself. <laughs> Defend your wife at any cost. Hallelujah. When she gets attacked from your parents, your sisters, even if something is wrong and you have seen it, don't join the team. Stay with your wife. Tell your sisters, you must know the boundaries. You can't cross here. This is my wife. And when you get in your room, two of you, tell her, I was defending you because I love you. But you have to change number one and number two. Hallelujah. Let's stand for the word of prayer. Heavenly Father, no matter how we will learn these things, but if the Holy Spirit will not be in us, we cannot make them happen. So we pray in a special way that help us to, to know what we can do so that we can be filled by the Spirit. Father, teach us every day because we want our families, our home, our houses to be another paradise. Teach us to forgive each other. Teach us to forget the past. Teach us not to hold the grudges. Teach us to live according to the knowledge. In Jesus' name we pray.